very pleased to, uh, to have you with us. Um, I uh, follow your interviews and, uh, and your articles with great interest and, uh, and uh, you make some very interesting points always about what you think is happening in the global and regional economy. But I thought I would start, having seen the uh, Agat's presentation uh, and having seen what the forecasts are, um, the Economist Intelligence Unit's forecasts are for the region, and some might say that they are unexciting. Uh, here in the UAE, we are forecasting uh, growth of 1.6% this year, uh, and Saudi, nothing above 3% for the next uh, for the next five years. The guy said, is this the new normal? Is this something that we should get used to? Is this something that we should be happy with? Or do you see the potential for the greater upside in the region beyond those modest forecasts? Thank you very much for inviting me here for a very important meeting and conference and to associate with all these people here. Thank you, sir. I look to think differently. You know, I am not a researcher for economy or political. I write what I feel. I feel what I feel. I say, you know, this is my uh, life. This is my normal life, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I agree with uh, Mr. Agada about the economy, but there is something I want to comment on. The world like a life, like human being, up and down. Sometimes you are positive, sometimes you are tired, sometimes you know you are you don't feel there's something wrong, even when you go to bed. The economy is cyclic, up and down, all over, like like the weather forecast, like uh, the environment, like you know. We look I mean, if I look through the last 10 years, in 19, uh, sorry, 2015 is the excellent year for United Arab Emirates. 1914, uh, sorry, 2014 as well. And then it dropped and then coming up again. If you tell me this is because of the GDP, because of the oil, I disagree with that at all. We go to Dubai for the Arabic. UAE depends on GDP, but Dubai depends a lot in partnership between the business people and, and the government, hand to hand. This is why the success of the city. There's growth, I can feel it. There's growth in a lot of business. Some business definitely is not improving because of certain reason. For example, if I take, for example, you know, we have in our group we are diversified. We have education, we have cars, we have uh, car leasing, we have uh, real estate, we have several things, insurance, etc. I mean, if I look to our car leasing, which is called land lease, there is improvement not every month, every day. Every day we can see the demand going up and up and up. If I go to our other education, we have the largest schools, Emirates International Schools, Jumeirah, and this. I can see the demand is huge, there's a lot of the waiting list. Just to give you an example. Just to show, to tell you how things is improving here. And I will take it by my own way, you know, of talking, not, to, you know, as a lecturer. We have towers here, each building has 540 apartments and penthouses. We have over 85% of the power to apart to towers. Other tower of first year. I mean this is to show you and prove to you there is people coming. But also there is also some people leaving because of reasons. That's, that's a good uh, that's a good point to make. And I wanted to ask you whether whether you are aware of what is happening uh, among the expat populations. There seems to be a demographic and population shift. It's very hard to measure that. But are you are you seeing something happening there? And, and are you seeing that impact consumer markets in particular and, and changing patterns of consumer activity? You know, in every world where there's a temporary world and there's a permanent world. I, am, I used to be a contractor, by the way, I'm not a contractor anymore. I divorced construction since a long time. Um, if you are 
hire to build the project, big project, as a contractor, and you finish, then you have to move everybody else to the home. That is, you know, take three years, four years, five years. This is, doesn't mean they affect the overall people in the country. But the permanent jobs, I mean, for example, we have thousands of people in my group. We never lose anybody since they were almost there and we are increasing and we are recruiting people because we can see there is growth. You are growing your workforce? Now. Yes. It's a net increase? Yes. I mean, this is what we are doing, really. Therefore, I can, I mean, look to them in, 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 in a green uh, pathway rather than dark. And light, that, uh, that, that, you know, there is, there is a good, good thing that's going on in the United Arab and the particular Dubai. Dubai doesn't uh, live or uh, for an oil, it's a uh, business. So, at the moment, are you happy, happier selling Mitsubishis or happier selling Nugatis? Which end of the market is, is the best place to be? No, definitely Mitsubishi. Uh, and, uh, we are selling, it is improving the retail, not as good as before, I have to be uh, fair. But we are exporting a lot of Mitsubishi, Pijero, for example, and other to China. Yeah. I mean, when I say a uh, lot, I'm talking about tens of thousands of cars. We are exporting more or less every month to China. That's good market for okay. us. And the domestic market here is... Domestic, uh, there's an improvement in the retail, but not, uh, not as before. But we can see there's improvement this year. Okay. So I wanted to ask a little bit about your perceptions of um, any imbalance in supply and demand in the various sectors here. Uh, there have been recently calls for, uh, by some parties for developments to be slowed in order to allow uh, demand to catch up with supply. And I guess to some extent the UAE has always run supply a little bit ahead of demand to be a step ahead to allow that space to be filled but do you think that uh, that gap has increased lately are you concerned about that gap do you yourself believe that the pace of development here should slow a step just to allow us to catch up not to slow to stop i got to stop, to stop. I, 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 I i mean i spoke with the other day i wrote, i spoke with the sheikh Muhammad, sheikh Muhammad about the government and the seven government companies on the real estate, which they are damaging the area, they are competing with the private sector, they are killing the private sector, which is unacceptable. And thanks to God now, they have made the decision to slow them down and to stop them to finish only the project land. Okay. There will be no increase, as far as I know, from the authority, that they have not, I mean, they published it in the media as well. And uh, I don't think, definitely, the, the, you know, a lot of images to the private sector. And does that mean uh, everything from private real estate to hospitality to healthcare? Which are the which are the sectors where you perceive the greatest gap between supply and demand at the moment? Especially real estate. Real estate. Especially real estate and hospitality. But you know, I think I think there's a lot of demand from outside. For the building of the law, especially for high quality construction, high quality property, and, and hotels. But, you know, uh, you know I, I want them, I mean, and I ask them that they have to stop building anymore. I spoke with the DTMC and I said that's what you are doing is not right, but thanks God now they are improving and they are doing a good job together it is with all the hotels and they are showing down. Next year is going to be a very significant year for the UAE and for Dubai in particular with Expo. How excited are you uh, about Expo itself and what do you think Expo is going to do for uh, the UAE's economy and for the broader region? Uh, do you feel that it's going to be a real shot in the arm uh, for the UAE and for the Middle East? Well, we are preparing our budgets now for next year. This is without counting the uh, expo and we are improving our budget by a certain percentage much much more than this year and 2018 um, expo will be i call it as a foundation 
foundation for visitor of this country. Most of these visitor will be also businessmen, investor, etc. They will open the door for people to know what is the jewel of the world, Dubai. The jewel of the world to see and the opportunity, you know, to invest in this country. I think the expo will be a big gate, a great gate for over overseas investor to come to this country and to see how protected and the full protection to protect any investor in, from, uh, in this country. So you see there being a real legacy effect for Expo. It's not just going to be a boost for that six month period. You think it will sustain? Uh, and, and what do you think will be the, the most uh, valuable aspects of, of the legacy of Expo? I think as I said, you know, this will invite a lot of investors. Well, they will visit in this country and they will see how, what is the selling. People here, they make money, they come here. Land of opportunity, the people will come here. Plus, and I think there will be growth. 2020, 2021, 2022, and, well, and then it will be a stability. I, I cannot see, I mean, from my experience, I'm not a researcher, but there is, I'm a businessman. I can see that it will be stable or a little bit of growth after 2023. So back to Agat's point, do you think that sort of 3%, I mean, has our economy here normalized now to the extent where we should be satisfied with 3% GDP growth? Have we, have we matured enough now as an economy that that is the kind of upside for us? Do you think 3% is exciting enough for, for those of us used to double digit growth back Not for me. Not for you. No, no, no. I, I disagree. I mean, with that. I mean, if I take the individual companies, you know, we see different. I mean, I cannot take across the board 3% or 5% or 1.5% or etc. But I will take it and I always, I weigh it in my goals, my companies. I can see, for example, some of the companies, they are stable. There is improvement of maybe 2% or 3%, but other company I can see improvement of 50%. So some of your teams have got very steep budgets to meet next year. Definitely, I mean, we did, we, I mean, definitely we are not forcing them, but we are, I am helping them. I am encouraging them to achieve that. Therefore, I mean, last year and this year is different. We achieved more in some areas. I mean, I, I will give you one example, like our car leasing. Our insurance, the manager insurance, I'm the chairman and the major shareholder of our company. I mean, there is a major improvement. If I go to the school as well, I mean, there is a few companies we have, of course, I will not go to the car, to Mitsubishi or Bugatti or this. This is improvement, but not as much as I want, as Khalil Hafta. I want it there as 2014, 2015, but it will come. But not so, it will take maybe. After six, seven years. Thank you. Yes. And please start thinking about your own questions. Um, I will carry on the conversations, but if you uh, if you start to raise your hands, I will notice you and I will come to you with the roving mind. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, you know, plainly, you built your business over many decades, um, and you will have seen a lot of changes in both the business environment and the legal and regulatory environment over that period of time. Do you think that uh, the business environment here uh, is, is optimal now? Or do you think that there are still things the government could do to encourage investment, to improve the business environment, perhaps some legal and regulatory changes? If you had a magic wand and you could wave it over the UAE government and, and, and ask them to, to change anything in that respect, what would you ask for? I would ask for more about all the Straight away. Straight away. And I have said that in uh, the TV, I said it uh, in the social media, everybody, and I said it to the ruler, I said it to everybody. Remove the VAT, people who are not used to VAT, we are not used to VAT, investors from overseas coming here, this is safe haven, no need for VAT. And I said it so many times, and uh, tired of saying it again. <laughs> Do you think VAT is a one-way street though? Can you see can you see a U-turn? Because VAT, I mean not a lot on us. You know it is scaring the investor sometimes. You know? I want the people to come to feel they are, you know, living on the same haven place, which is true. I mean five percent is nothing. But 
psychologically people feel there's something a new thing coming. Well, they know it'll be 10% next rather than they know exactly. it'll be 10%. So, do you think there are fairer taxation models that could be applied here in the region? I suggested that. I said, don't take visas, don't take this and this and that. Take tax from us. From like anywhere in the world, from the your net profit, you can say it's a percent, the twenty of mine. So you would say a corporation tax? I would I want it. I ask about it. You would say you rather than a lot of fees is coming sure. building up, you don't know what's happening, you know, from your turnover. Okay. And you would see income tax for individuals? I don't know. No. I cannot see that at all. And it you think that would be it would not happen. Okay. Yeah. I am sure of that. Okay. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> 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 you, you remember. Um, can I um, see if there's anybody out there on the floor that would uh, like to ask uh, Mr. Al Hamza a question? I can see Jihad down there in the middle with his hand raised. So, who has our roving microphones? Here, here it comes. Uh, just bear with us for 10 seconds. Just, um, I don't know, I think Jihad and myself from uh, Bekhtan Dickinson, uh, Abu Rashid. Uh, what about your investments outside the UAE? I know that uh, as a chairman you've uh, tried to invest outside the UAE, so any updates on that? Well, our investment overseas is very successful. Very successful, and we are also planning to invest overseas. Uh, always, I believe, in diversification also of countries. I don't invest in a country to make a lot of money and I don't like that country. I invest in a country if I like the country. You know, that's my philosophy. Therefore, our investment, we are fine and we are doing very well. Yes. Thank you. Which are, the, which are the hot spots, which are the countries that appeal to you at the moment for that overseas investment? I think Central Europe. Okay. Central Europe, I mean, Central Europe like, uh, I mean, Hungary, like uh, Slovakia, like uh, Czech Republic, like uh, Croatia, all this, and Serbia. Okay. Well, Ivana will be very pleased to hear that. Yes. Um, and are you conscious, do you pay attention to these changing, shifting global alliances? I've had talked a lot about the US China trade war, tariffs, uh, sanctions. Do those things worry you? Do, you? do you keep an eye on that? And does, does that in any way change your investment decisions around the world? The problem is, I mean, this is a new thing has been created from the time of President uh, Trump. You know, always escalating, uh, staring, and happening. China, we work with them since a long time. We work with the American, we work with the European and the British and Asia. Nothing, you know, always their stability politically, because business also goes parallel to the political escalation. Uh, not really, it will not affect us here, I can say that, yes. Do you think Mr. Trump will win a second term? If he will not create problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can see another hand. Is there. Uh, is there more? Uh, 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 oh, we're, oh, one here first. Yes, sorry, sir. Yes, sir, I'm sorry, from Schindler. Um, my question is maybe for two points. One, how do you see the appetite of uh, UE to invest more in having industrial activities, more industrial activities in UE, and how this can help the economy? The second one related to also the permanent visa or the uh, long-term visas for the expats here. How do you see this can help as well? Thank you. Thank you. So two parts of that question. The first yeah. of all is, is, is industrial investment, manufacturing, I guess, and is this a good place to make things? I think it is. I mean, our government, I can see that they are focusing now on the industry and manufacturing. I mean, I mean, and they are doing a lot of things on that. I mean, if you look to the aluminum smelter, this is very long time and becoming now bigger and bigger and bigger. That is one of the major uh, factory called. Plus now there is in Abu Dhabi and the, 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 the West province, they are doing a lot of definitely, and there is a lot of in the table, the government doing it, which is going to be done with the private sector, because it needs a lot of fun. And I think they are doing that uh, 
But you know, we have to take things also step by step. We cannot jump like we have done in a lot of mistakes in real estate. You know, we have to, take, to study very well, to certify it, to verify it, to be very careful in uh, doing it. Secondly, regarding, uh, I mean, I think that the immigration or the government has announced the uh, resident or the visa or something for uh, 10 years, I think. That's what I mean. For certain. For certain, for certain jobs, uh, for certain and, people, yeah, certain I mean, this is the one that can be able to invest in the country, and we will come. I am against, for example, sponsor. I am against. You have, they have the, I mean, the department to force it to be part of somebody local. That's I am against that. We have to know to leave the people independent. If they want to be part of with you or with X, then it's fine. But I don't want rule and regulation. You have to have a sponsor. But now our local government here, they give you really, they are flexible. They, are, they, they facilitate for you to be also on your own without any partner. And I, the visas must be, I think they are applicable to all people must in this country, right? And just a follow-up question from that. I think you know, one of the things that we see with the UAE is a great vision from the leadership, a great can-do attitude. Uh, I get the sense that the UAE thinks it could do everything and anything. But if you were to advise the country on the areas for which it should prioritize, what should the UAE become known for in terms of products and services? What do you think we could we could achieve global leadership in which areas? I think, I mean, it is variety. But I would give priority, for example, to <laughs> Visitor or all type of visitor, whether they are tourists, businessmen, and to see, I mean, to see, to take an example, to take an example of this young, young country, young in age but old in experience. I mean, nothing in the world has been grown like United Arab Emirates in no time. On the last few years, really, you see improvement and. Regulation, safety, protection, everybody being home here. I mean, this is something really you cannot find it anywhere in the world. I mean, here the great thing and the success of this country is the mix of nationality, mix of religion, and we are like one family, big family. Whether you are Asian, Hindus, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, we are one big family in this country. This is why we don't. Differentiate. This is the only country really doing that. <laughs> I mean, we are learning, uh, you know, from each other. You come to our corporate office. You find from every nationality, from every every color and every religion. And you know, we learn from each other. I learn from them. They learn from me. We discuss things, and we learn. Nobody better than each other, you know. And nobody, you know, we are studying every day, 7 30 in the morning. You find different faces, different color, different people sitting at that uh, table. And we discuss everything and we arrive into the right solution for the day. Thank you very and much. So, very popular sentiment, plainly, with our audience. Uh, I think, Mark, did the microphone arrive with you? Yes. Okay. All right, so I'm here, Mr. Khalaf. Um, my name is Marwa Khairallah, uh, and I'm part of the SIG group. I'm right here. <laughs> um, okay, my question uh, more or less touches on the question that uh, Robert was, uh, was trying to pose. Uh, so, in your view, uh, what is, what's your view in terms of the transformation that's currently happening in Saudi Arabia? And do you see this as a collaboration opportunity with the UAE to rebrand the region uh, strongly? Or do you see it as a competition? And in that case, reflecting Robert's question, what would be the competitive advantage of UAE versus another hub in the region? A good question. <laughs> so, Saudi, what's happening there? That's very, very sensitive. <laughs> Well, you can give me a political answer, that's fine. <laughs> I think this gentleman well, me, has, has enough power to, to speak his mind. <laughs> well, uh, let me explain you. We work in this country very hard. We work 24 hours to introduce United Arab Emirates 
and the right part to connect to the world. It's not easy, you know. Everything takes time. Like a born child, you have to train that child how to walk, how to... Definitely, we are partners in Saudi Arabia. We will support each other very, very much, and we look, I'm looking personally at everybody else. But I wish them all the best. To be like Dubai or United Arab Emirates, I think it will take years and years and years. Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do, you think, do you think there will come a time you when... Don't like that, I don't well, no, I'm going to you. Do you think there will come a time when multinational companies who are obviously based here for the opportunities around the region, do you think there will come a tipping point where they think actually we should be in Riyadh? Uh, a regional HQ should be... We, we will not allow them to move. <laughs> Definitely, I mean, some of the company, but I will tell you something. There is bigger countries, there is uh, more freedom countries, but they move their regional offices to this, to Dubai in particular. All the company working for in Greece, I don't know where, in Asia, in Middle East, and some of Europe, but their regional office is here. This, I mean, here not only you find everything. Everything you want, you are looking for, is there. Therefore, there is no other alternative. Okay, for now. And for some time. Okay, okay our clock is ticking down. We've got three minutes left. I can see two hands. I can see one here. So uh, let's go to this gentleman here, if we can, first. And then, sorry, so where were you? One there. And let's see where that takes us with regard to the time. So we keep these relatively succinct, please. Thanks very much. Uh, Neil Bernard from Expense Reduction Analysts. Uh, mine, mine's a non-political question. Um, I'd just be uh, interested to get your view as to comparing, I guess, the UAE back in 2015 when you were particularly talking about the growth of, of the UAE as to where we are today and how businesses and maybe government have actually developed or, or not developed yet a, a culture of cost reduction or cost optimization and how well do you think we're along that track and, and how much further do you think we have to go? Thank you, good question. I think there is to improve and to go to 2015, I need a lot of work. And, uh, you know, we have the sovereign fund, if, if this is my answer. We have the sovereign fund is invested overseas. I need part from 50% or 25% to be invested here to, to, to inject the blood circulation in the, uh, in the body of United Arab Emirates. I mean, really, I cannot understand why we are investing all the sovereign fund overseas. We want to invest part of this sovereign fund into United Arab Emirates, in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Northern Emirates. This is why can, you know, improve and goes back to 2014-2015 where the economy is much better than now. But I can see, Alan, and this is, I have said it a few weeks ago, I think, in my uh, social media, I said, I cannot understand why our sovereign bank, which is hundreds of billions of dollars, invested overseas and not invested here, in this beautiful country. And we can doesn't matter, I invest overseas. Okay, but invest, let us say, 70%, leave that percent to be invested here to inject a little bit of energy into the country. 